And I was just scratching some figures out of my head. If, if 300 million Americans uh, are given 1,500 each for a vaccine, I think that's about $450 billion. I mean, <laughs> this is, this, you know, again, it's chump change compared to what they're willing to spend on the Green New Deal and all the other stuff. But still, it's, it's just like, you know, throw money at a problem and, and it's going to fix it. That doesn't work. You're exactly right, David. To the exact uh, totals here is for everyone over 18 to get this vaccine under this $1,500 incentive plan is $383 billion. Not that that kind of money matters to anybody in Washington, but it's still ridiculous. Now, you know where Delaney got this idea from? He got it from India, where in India, they, with the two shots, the first shot, you got lentils, the second shot, you got plates, and they claim that that increased the willingness of people to get the vaccine by six times. It, maybe it will work, but it doesn't resolve the issue of $1,500. Uh, I'm not certain. Maybe this is going to kill me. Uh, you know what? I don't care. I'll yeah. still take the 1500 It makes no sense from that standpoint. Well, Aaron, there's, there's, there are other incentives, and these are really disincentives for not taking it. Uh, excuse the double negative, but we're seeing a lot of Europeans uh, European nations already setting up vaccine standards for things like travel. You can't come into this this area or this country unless unless you have on your passport stamp that you had a vaccine. You can't get a job unless you have the same uh, stamp. What do you, what do you think about the distance in incentives for not taking a shot? So certainly, and we've already discussed certain employers, even the United States, could potentially require workers to take this vaccine. So I, I think that is you know, using a combination of carrot and sticks. But I think the, the $1,500 really misses a point that right now most polls say that a little over half the people are already willing to take the vaccine. And we only need about 75% of the population to be vaccinated to right. create herd immunity, if the experts are correct. So we really need to target how do we convert those that 25% of the population over 18 to 18. And so... When you look at the people that are most hesitant, it typically is or more is more within minorities. Uh, so it might be carrots within tax breaks or not, but not necessarily cash. Um, other ways to get around it to address those that are the most needy and also the most hesitant. Steve, there's another part about all this, and I, and I touched upon it with what European nations are threatening to do. The, what we have seen from this virus, the, the ugly, obviously the ugliest side is getting sick and dying, but, but we've also seen the ugly side in public policy of authoritarian instincts uh, being tickled out of a lot of public leaders in terms of what you can and cannot do because of, of the COVID outbreaks. A lot of them not based on science. In fact, a lot of them flying in the face of science when it comes to outdoor dining and, and some of the, the real results of lockdowns in terms of how much harm it can cause. Uh, isn't that part of the, the problem that, that the people who want to give the vaccinations are having, that there's been so much abuse of science on the part of public officials, it's making it difficult to, uh, it's going to make it difficult to get the vaccine around. Uh, well said, David, I agree with that. I think Americans are skeptical of what, quote, the science is, because what's happened is science has become so politicized, right? I mean, science today has become whether whatever the left, whatever study the left uh, uh, wants that confirms their beliefs. And you see that, by the way, with lockdowns, you're exactly right. The one lesson we've learned pretty firmly over the last nine or 10 months is that lockdowns have really not made much of a difference at all in terms of the spread of the virus. In fact, states that have not locked down have had fewer health problems than states that do. And yet here we are, David. You know, I just listened in your interview, all of these restaurants being shut down, all of these stores, uh, millions of people being laid off again. That isn't science. That is public policy folly. Dan, I feel that when history looks back at the way we behaved in this, uh, they're not going to speak very kindly about public officials and, and the way in which they handled it, the way in which they contradicted their own orders time and again, <laughs> or, or the, the orders of people within their own state. You see this, this feud between Governor Cuomo in New York and the, and the mayor de Blasio of New York giving contradictory orders with regard to schools, et cetera. Uh, it, there's, there's so much finger pointing. And then the way it was politicized during the political campaign, particularly by the Democrats, who essentially were blaming President Trump for a virus that came from China. 
historically, we're going to look back at this and it's going to be a storyline from something out of the Twilight Zone. And as far as scaring people, you have to look at John Delaney's party, that it was the Democrats who were planting that seed to scare people. And that was fueled by the mainstream media. It's just the way it is. So, of course, people are going to be skeptical about whether this vaccine is going to work because it's the quote unquote Trump vaccine. Forget the fact that we're going to be giving this to our frontline workers first and (laughs) foremost to make sure they're safe. So if it's good enough to protect them, why wouldn't it protect the the public in general? Look, we need a campaign going the other way from the mainstream. It's it's, it's uh, hard to predict what historians are going to say, but I I have a feeling that uh, Operation Warp Speed is going to go down very well in history. Certainly a lot better than than public policy officials who are now taking credit for their great actions, which, in fact, I don't think history is going to record as that great.